You're tuned in to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Welcome back to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast, where we are building connections, showcasing the impressive and inspiring movers and makers. I'm your host, Lenore, and today we're going to be joined by Jeannie Seely smith the president and CEO of the nonprofit organization Perspectives in Minneapolis. They empower women, rebuild families, and they break the cycle for at-risk women and children for a total family recovery for over 45 years. Now, Jeannie, she's been with the company for 37 years and is the creator of all the programs they have to offer today. And I'm so looking forward to hearing how we can help create more awareness. So Jeannie Seely smith welcome to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks so, for asking me. I want to hear all about perspectives. Who can Perspectives help and what are the programs that you have to offer? Perspectives uh, works with our target population, our women emerging from homelessness with their children and who have a history of addiction, are seeking recovery. Uh, Most of our women um, are dual diagnosed with both a a chemical and mental health um, disorder. So that is our population that we uh, are targeted for and our programs to uh, work with that population are a very comprehensive model. Lenore, it includes uh, a supportive housing program, uh, uh, outpatient treatment program, children uh, programs. We probably invest more in children's programs than even our mother's programs, but it is uh, kind of uh, best practices that we work with this population. So you are located in Minneapolis. Do you only help uh, women and children in that specific area or can you help women and children across the entire nation? No, our our site, our headquarters are here. Our housing campus is here and our large family center are here. So we do serve all of Minnesota, but the women come uh, to us through the shelter system or the referral system of Hennepin County, which is Minneapolis. Now, do the women feel comfortable enough to just come and say knock on your door or is it like you said all through like some of referrals well i wish it was that easy that they could come and knock on our door i really would love that actually uh, it is a referral process and we also have an interview process so we are the women are referred to us through the county shelters and the treatment programs so we then will interview the woman is referred and we meet with them and it's a pretty extensive interview to see if they have the um, meet the eligibility requirement for our program. Because when they do come in, Lenore, it is, it's very, um, uh, I mean, we spend, it's very intense program and we have a lot of resources. So we want to make sure that the woman who's coming in is really in a place for change and to utilize the resources that we have for her. Case management, clinical services, chemical dependency services, and all of the programs we have for the, for her child as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, it, just because somebody's referred and they may not be ready to take that next step. Um, exactly. Do, do they just go, I don't want to say just go back to the shelter, but do they just stay in the shelter or in those other systems until they are ready to make that move and really make that change for the better for their future? I would assume so, the women who come to us, and if they don't choose our program or if we don't choose them, we really don't keep track of. So their options are very few. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good decision for them not to take at this moment of their timing on where they are with their life, not to take that opportunity. But if they aren't ready, you know, the resources are squandered and the time is squandered, uh, and the women, we have that, about 25% of the women that we do take uh, actually do not stay in the program uh, to really graduate from the program. They they either relapse, or they, they leave, or they, you know, violate so many of the uh, policies that they're just not successful. And that's sad because the, the children leave too. And that's always hard on the staff. So Perspectives has been around for over 45 years. Now, Jeannie, yeah. you've been with them for 37 of those years. You've yeah. been there from basically building it up because you created most of the programs that they have there today. How did you get involved? 
Well, I came out of um, Wisconsin with a large community action agency program on youth development, but it was the anti-poverty programs that actually really won my heart early on in life. I saw so many people who could really, really break this cycle if they had opportunity. And the anti-poverty programs of Johnson's Great Society was were exactly aimed at providing opportunity, removing barriers. So when I came to Minneapolis in uh, it took a position at Perspectives and I became, I took a position as their uh, CEO. Um, I, because of my fundraising background, they were really interested in me because I had no chemical dependency background. I only had anti-poverty and development program and fundraising background for them. So when I, when I came, it was uh, the women that they were serving, it was, um, it was a lecture series and it was very involved in women and removing the stigma of chemical dependency. But these women had a lot of resources and I had such an exciting board of directors. So when I began to began to talk to them about let's work with women and children who really, really won't survive without us. They really need this opportunity, a second chance, and we can give that to them. The other women have a lot of support services and family around them. Let's go for the women that really don't. And so that ended, um, that, that began a program in the Women's uh, Correctional Institution here, a, a very progressive uh, woman uh, who was the superintendent at that time, now has been reverted back to calling wardens. But at that time, it was a very progressive movement in the, the Women's uh, uh, Correctional Institute. And we were able to take women and have them custody trained with other women who had gone through recovery. And those women then would bring them in out and get them settled into different programs. That led to our supportive housing program because we knew that even though a woman is leaving corrections facility, leaving treatment, leaving shelters, leaving some little time that she's had in the institution, she can leave, but if she's going right back into that community because she has no other choice, she's the recidivism rate is very high. So we knew we had to have supportive housing and that was fun. I had great people around me to develop our first, that first housing campus for women. Yeah. What actually are, there, there are a lot, but what are some of the most common misconceptions that, you know, some of the listeners, just people in general have about those individuals that mothers, kids who are homeless or that are struggling with that chemical dependency? Yeah. Um, you know, the misconceptions I think have more to do with thinking how far apart um, a woman in mainstream is from a woman who's on the street. They, they, don't, they don't link with them. They don't see uh, how they could be that woman. So those misconceptions, there's this wide, huge gap that I have and thank God, you know, but the grace of God, there goes me. But the, the really, the, the way to view it is how many things you do have in common that this woman, uh, you know, if she only had some barriers removed, could have lived a different life. For instance, all women want to be safe. All women want to, be, uh, you know, have a home. And no woman, you know, grows up as a child and dreams about living up, living in a shelter. They don't dream of becoming addicted or that their children are going to be taken away from them. So women are, you know, to, uh, just, um, just naturally bond together in our hearts and our minds. And so we join that first, we join that woman and we know what it feels like. Many know how what it feels like to be a mother or a daughter or a sister. And we know how great family must be, you know, for that to really flourish within us. We have to have family and loved ones. This woman had none of that. So when we look at her, instead of her choices that she has made and see how could she make such poor choices, we have to begin from the very premise of where she was as a child growing up what did she have or what did I have that she didn't? So the misconceptions are, you know, she's an addict. They begin with the fact that she was an addict, but she wasn't an addict all her life. How did that happen? What went wrong? You know, and I think the compassion that I have with so many of our donors and so many of the women out in our nation, they do make that stretch. They can reach and they can touch that woman's heart and they somehow can identify and have the empathy for that woman. So that's the beauty of how women connect with other women who really do need an opportunity, you know, to have a second chance, third chance in life and to raise that child. You did mention a little bit um, donations and then donors now. You right now are in the midst of a major fundraising campaign for Perspectives. How is that, how is that working out right now? Especially like, well, you know, October, 2020, November, 2020. Yeah, yeah right. 
Well, we had some good news last week. Our Minnesota legislator passed a $4.5 million bonding bill for Perspective's new family center. We have an existing family center, but we want to increase the size of it by 16,000 square feet. We want to gut it. We want to make it very, uh, we, we, we want to make it trauma informed when people walk in that they will feel that there, this is a place that has a lot of, uh, culture sensitivity to it, that we relate to all cultures. So when somebody does walk in, they feel comfortable that it will all be remodeled. The inside will be a, a new reception area, you know, with a, a little fireplace. Our kids cafe will be expanded. So we have another you know, uh, space for another 20 kids. Our, our upstairs with our kids connection and our early childhood development program will be most effective. We will be able to increase our space to 4,000 square feet so that we will be able to have 60 little ones on site every day. And that, of course, is where all the intervention and all the true work of really changing and breaking this cycle, it begins at three years old. I do know some organizations have programs that help those individuals get back into the workforce, you know, maybe finish high school, get their GEDs, those types of things along those lines. Do you offer programs like that as well at Perspectives? We have a, a, a community. So we, our biggest uh, goal all the time when we look at a program is, are we duplicating a service? How do we work with our community? Let's partner. We wouldn't have to do a GED because our community, you know, the, our, our community ed program does that. So our case managers are seeking resources and partners all of the time through employment, you know, what we can uh, do with uh, eventually getting them permanent housing when they leave our program, what get, they can do with training. We work with colleges, we work with community colleges, and the, the issue is to get that woman or in a place where she will be able to actually go and learn, actually not only get a job, but retain a job, you know, to be able to have some sobriety behind her so much so that this is how she wants to live the rest of her life. And that is she, when she gets a child back, if it's been, her child's been taken by child protection, that she never lets that child go again because her life is so changed. So there's so many elements when you're working with a woman who comes to us so broken, so traumatized, you know, so defeated in her life. How do we get her to a place, you know, where she can feel that she actually can grab some, some really good time here and use it to get her to that so that when she gets there, then she it does know that the next job is employment, training, we have women in school. The longer they stay, um, they will be making those bigger choices. You know, the most we have with women is usually about uh, 24, 25 months. And then um, that that's the average day for a woman. We can do a lot in that time, but we're not gonna make them a CEO in that time. And we're not gonna get them in, you know, graduating with PhDs. We, we have we have high standards and we, we do have a high bar for them. Sobriety, uh, uh, work through your mental health issues, uh, work with your trauma probably the rest of your life, learn how to parent, you know, learn how to keep a job, you know, learn those soft skills, you know, to really begin to feel a purpose in your life again. We get them there and they, you know, and then they fly. That's what we hope that they fly. So for Jeannie, those of us who are not specifically in Minneapolis right now. Is there a way that we can help? Well, you can uh, go to our website, which is Perspectives Family Center. And there you will see our programs. Uh, we have our, um, there's a place to donate. You can talk, uh, we are looking for naming of certain, you know, we have names on our different rooms of our capital campaign. You can see our new building there. Um, you can see our Kids Cafe. Kids Cafe is a very unique program where children who had lived in shelters and homeless, they come into our kids' our kids cafe with our, our chef and they actually cook their dinner, you know, and they and they eat together and they clean up together. And they've never really eaten around a table. Many of them have not. So we have very uh, unique programs, you know, for children to be inspired on where they can be in life down the, down the future. But yes, everyone can find us at Perspectives Family Center and you put, put that in Google or else www.perspectives-family.org and they will find us. And are there volunteer opportunities as well for those who are in that area that can, you know, come and be there and help all these other women and children out? 
Oh, absolutely. The, the heart of our program are volunteers and you should see what they do. I mean, they come and they paint, they build our gardens, they help with the kids with cooking, they sit with them and share the day with them, they read to them, they rock babies, they, uh, they, they just keep us happy and going. And, and for us, they, they, you know, just in a way light our fire because we see how dedicated and committed they are. And they're, they're coming just to give. That's all they have to do is to give of themselves. You know, they have no other stake in it, except I want to give back and help these women. And they get such joy with it. And we get joy from them. Sure. Yeah. We have lots of volunteers. And I'm just getting joy from you because you seem so, I don't want to use the word into it, but so passionate about helping just the fellow woman on like the supermarket, you know, the yeah. fellow child that you see, you know, walking to school, things like that, and really just bringing them to have more of a successful life and find purpose for themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And it does keep us, that's probably why I've been here learning for so, uh, so long, you know, because each time I think of going, there's something else to do. There's some one other, one other thing to do, like our capital campaign, that will probably be my swan song. But after that is done and our building is built, then we start seeking more housing because that is truly where we can make the difference with a woman, is keep her and have her in some really safe housing. Our housing is unique to every place, I think, in the nation. A woman moves into our apartments, it's fully furnished. It has, uh, we take her grocery shopping the day she comes, all the linens all are there, all the cleaning products. The women in a church in St. Louis Park, where we are actually housed, out, it's a suburb of First Ring out at Minneapolis. They uh, make quilts for our women and they would put quilts on the bed with little notes. So we have, you know, stuffed animals. We have cribs for the kids when they come. It's, it really is a totally furnished apartment where they walk in. And I wish that, I, I wish we could video sometime what happens when a woman walks in because this is a woman who has been living in a shelter or on the street or in a treatment program. It might be the first time that she's been reunited, you know, with her child that she's bringing there. And they just, you know, they, I'm not exaggerating, they just collapse, hands and face, you know, and just in tears. Some women have just fallen to the floor. They could not believe that they have a home, that they're gonna have their own bed that night. Their child is gonna be with them and they have a home kitchen refrigerator where they're gonna be able to cook their own meal. And then they have the community around them too. Because I, all of our campus is five buildings together. So there's 52 women. Yeah, I think that support and having that that extended family of yours that's yeah. not blood, but you know, that is there for you and that support really helps push you forward. And if you have mm -hmm. individuals like yourself or even for the women and children that are there, be able to make friends with say their neighbors and other women and children that are understanding the same things will really help them push forward towards the goals that each of them have. Oh, that, I mean, it's when, if you were on site right now, I would say, come on out and let's just go walk. And so we do a walk around and then the women come out and they talk and I never prepare it, you know, if it's somebody comes on for on site. So I never tell women we're coming. And that's the best, that's the best story, isn't it? To see it live and a woman just react, you know, just as you walk on and she just starts talking about this program saved my life. I don't know where I would be without this program don't know where I would be if I didn't have this housing and the staff I have. You know, my case manager is always there for me. My clinical person is always there for me. So women who visit us come and they hear those stories and they and they can relate so much. And, and some women say, wouldn't it be great to just be here in all this sisterhood? <laughs> so there's almost an envy in a sense, you know, because there's such a, a peaceful surrounding, you know, uh, you know, the hope that these women have. And that just, you know, that gives everybody hope. So for more information on Perspectives, uh, the nonprofit organization, you can head to perspectives-family.org. That's P-E-R-S-P-E-C-T-I-V-E-S, -E -E the dash, family, F-A-M-I-L-Y dot org. You can reach out to Jeannie Seeley Smith as well, the president and CEO. So she knows everything and anything. <laughs> it is J I wish I did. I wish I did. <laughs> I'll tell you, you you know you know more than probably a lot of people, so oh, and way more than me. <laughs> yeah, but I you get to know how much you don't know. Yes, I, I, we we wish we had magic wands you know, that we could really just change everybody. There's a lot to know yet yeah, how to work with this population. Yeah. And you can reach out as well to the main office at nine five two. 
926-926-2600. Again, that's perspectives-family.org. You can also follow them on socials as well, facebook.com slash perspectives.family, on Instagram at Perspectives Family, and on Twitter at Perspectives Inc. So Jeannie, thank you so much for joining us today, creating awareness and giving us all the information on perspectives. Thank you so much. It was fun talking with you. Thank you for having me. Perspectives-family.org. Once again, that's Mm perspectives-family.org. I'm your host, Lenora, and that's a wrap on another episode of the Brand Ambassador Select podcast. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss one. More at brandambassadorselect.com, and we will see you next time.